Today, I pit the runt of AMD's litter, the RX 6400, against 8K gaming for some reason. And step number one was to go and get some 8K. So we went out and bought the cheapest 8K display we could find, but before Anna Hello. helps me unbox this behemoth, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor that helped pay for this very sensible test. Today's video sponsor is back due to popular demand, and it's none other than Linode. Linode is a Linux-based cloud computing and web hosting service that offers multiple products to manage cloud storage, websites, databases, game servers, Kubernetes, and they can even handle whatever computational load you can imagine. Also, if you value good customer support, which you should, Linode is one of the best in the business. I mean, look at how happy these two are with their service. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a 60-day, $100 free credit. Thank you, Linode, for sponsoring today's video. but I think that this shouldn't be exposed to babies. Wow, that is a big ass TV. Now this huge TV is the LG 65 Nano 95, which has a 65 inch IPS display. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of LG marketing crap around its HDRness and whatever. But I think by far the most interesting thing about this TV is that at 1,500 Canadian dollars, it is the cheapest way to get your hands on a native 8K panel. And I am really excited to see what that little RX 6400 is gonna make of this TV. Now to put into perspective just how trousers soiling the prospect of 8K gaming is, even for a high-end graphics card, if this square represents the pixels in a 1080p image, a resolution that, let's face it, already kind of pushes the limits of what the RX 6400 can do, this is what 8K looks like. In fact, you can fit 16 1080p images in one 8K image, which for the tiny little die of the RX 6400 and its four gigs of video memory may be a bit of a challenge. Although interestingly, one of the things that makes the RX 6400 potentially usable for 8K gaming is that it has an HDMI 2.1 port, which means it should be able to output an 8K signal. So let's drop the little RX 6400 in a gaming PC so that we can pit a Chihuahua against Cthulhu and see what happens. Ah yes, I think the RGB Vomitron is the perfect host for our 6400 8K test. This RGB GPU support bracket is really putting in some work with the 6400. Let's see what output resolution we have here. 4K. That's as, that's as high as it's letting us go. Luckily, getting the TV to output an 8K signal only took a couple of minutes. First, I reinstalled the graphics card drivers, and then I had to switch the HDMI output from 4K to 8K in the TV settings. Yes, there we go. That is a nice number to see. It's funny that it recommends we not use the native uh, resolution of the display. But let's see what happens when we do. Is that an 8K now? It was, and I was very impressed. Ah oh, yes, that is some resolution right there. And would you look at that? The fabled tiny little 8K MSI afterburner makes its long awaited return to the channel. Like you can go right up to things and it, it still looks very, very sharp. But again, we're not here to marvel at 8K. We're here to punish a little baby graphics card with it. So let's try and run some games. Now we're going to start off with GTA 5 running at 1080p with everything on the lowest settings available and we are getting a very good result. Look at that, over 180 frames per second. Wow, it is actually running too well because it's at that point with GTA 5 where you start getting stutters because the engine can't handle the very high frame rate. So we definitely need to move up to 4K. 
that is much better than I was expecting. We are getting solidly over 60 frames per second at 4K with the little 6400. Granted, this is with all low settings, but I am still very impressed by that. It is really playable. Okay, so if it runs 4K this well, then 8K is not gonna be a problem at all, is it? Wow, that has dropped from 70 frames per second at 4K down to four frames per second at 8K. <laughs> this is exactly the kind of GPU carnage I was looking for. The 4K result had me worried, but 8K really has delivered here. But let's see if we can find a game the 6400 will run in 8K. Okay, now we are gonna have to do a bot match because otherwise we won't have an overlay. So at 1080p low settings, CSGO is giving us a reasonably high frame rate. Although it's not that much higher than uh, GTA 5, so I don't actually have very high hopes for the 8K result. Ooh, it, it doesn't like 4K very much. There's quite a bit of tearing and there's the occasional visual artifact. Let's actually see. Oh, we have eight times anti-aliasing running. That is not what you want to be doing running at 4K. So let's disable all of this stuff. Ah, ah yes, CSGO has in fact crashed. Oh, no, we're, we're back. It, it just had a bit of a tactical crash just to recover and now we're, <laughs> we're good. Despite the high frame rate, it's actually not that good a gaming experience. The image is very teary and you can really feel the input lag. Hmm. Let's see 8K. There we go, and 8K, apply. Oh, it does have an 8. Oh! Oh, it does not like 8K on CSGO. That just took the system straight down. <laughs> that is quite a unique blue screen of death as well. I don't think I've seen four of them on one display. <laughs> okay, I, I guess CSGO is out of the question. Whoa, look at the size of the cursor in Dota. It's like basically the size of my hand. So with Dota 1080p high-ish settings, we're getting about 200 frames per second. Uh, so let's immediately, just very quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if Dota 2 would run on an easy bake oven because we're getting almost 24 frames per second at 8K with an RX 6400. Now don't get me wrong, this is by no means a usable result, and if you enter a ranked game with this kind of performance, you're full on griefing, but still, that's, that's kind of crazy. Now, we may just be in a corridor here, but of course, Half-Life 2 at 1080p high settings runs crazy well on this system because, well, it's not a Casio watch. Uh, but, let's, let's make it a little bit more daunting just immediately off the bat with 4K, it had zero impact on the frame rate. Even coming outside, we're still running at a solid 300-ish frames per second. Uh, so yeah, let's jump to 8K. They clearly did not foresee the Half-Life 2 title being displayed in 8K ever, look at that. I like how the scaling just completely falls apart at 8K. It does not even almost know what to do with itself here. But once I loaded into the game, I was genuinely blown away. The complete lack of jaggies is the thing that really gets me about it. Native 8K is actually kind of wild. Uh, you can clearly tell that the textures and stuff were not made with 8K in mind, but you get right up to the image and it's just so crisp. I'm so impressed with how well Half-Life 2 scales with crazy high resolutions. Of course, when you get close up to the textures, you can see that they don't look fantastic, but something about the resolution just makes the old graphics look weirdly real. And look at how well it's running. Like if this TV could display 120 Hz 8K, we'd be able to game with high refresh rate 8K on an RX 6400. Granted, the game is almost 20 years old at this point, but still, 
This makes me really want to do a video with dynamic super resolution in this TV to see if we can use Half-Life 2 to bring a 3090 Ti to its knees. I think that would be pretty cool. And just like that, I was hooked to the uncanny appeal of super high resolution gaming. I was trying every old game in my Steam library that I thought would work on this system, and I was blown away every time. The impeccable sharpness of the high resolution gives this uncanny realism to the bad graphics that makes it seem more like you're seeing in bad graphics than playing a game that has bad graphics, if that makes sense. And Anna was really impressed with the size of it. And, and, and it's kind of because of its size that I think that. Like, I feel like I could be walking into this doorway yeah, and yeah. like would be that size. I feel like if I was running upstairs, they would be that size. It's like the scale of the image is lifelike. Yeah, like I, yeah, yes, I think it's that. So what started out as an exercise in GPU torture ended up getting me really excited about old video games, which I think is a good point to end off this video. If you want to check out another video, a suggestion will pop up in a second and consider subscribing while you're clicking around on stuff. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.